Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review, long delayed review, for Bill and Ted Face the Music, which is the third film in the now Bill and Ted trilogy and came out 29 years after the two of them had their bogus journey, which I've said before, I don't think is bogus. So anyway, this movie takes place many, many years after the second film, where we have thought that Bill and Ted had united the world with their music due to the Battle of the Bands in the second movie, but apparently not. And years have gone by. They are, I guess you could say they're experiencing their midlife crisis. Suddenly, the daughter of Rufus, Kelly, played by Kristen Scal, takes Bill and Ted to the future where the two of them are warned that they have 24 hours to make the song that will unite the world. Otherwise, there's going to be time paradoxes of, let's just say, ridiculous proportions, because this series has always been ridiculous. So with the help of their two daughters, played by Samara Weaving and Bridget Lundy Payne, Bill and Ted travel across time to try to take the song from their future selves because that's obviously a lot easier than having to write the song themselves. But you know, that's the logic of this series, so what are you gonna do? I might be on the minority when it comes to this, but I actually wasn't clamoring for another Bill and Ted movie. I think the first two are just fine the way they are, and with the way the second movie ended, I just thought to myself, what could they actually do with a third movie? Because it seems like that second one wrapped everything up and turned Bill and Ted into the iconic legends that saved the world and united the world. And plus, we've seen sequels to movies made decades after the last one, and usually they don't turn out very good. So there was part of me looking at this going, man, this could easily be terrible. But at the same time, I'm holding out hope because I actually like these characters quite a bit. Huh? And I gotta say, it was... fine? I mean, it's not bad. I didn't have a bad time watching this movie. I had a lot of fun with it. But I feel like this might be a problem where I had some sort of nostalgic memory watching the first two Bill and Ted movies, especially the first one. And with this movie, I'm watching it with the mindset of an adult, and I'm thinking to myself, this doesn't quite make a whole lot of sense, does it? But then again, having revisited the first two Bill and Ted's, uh, those don't make a whole lot of sense when you really think about it. And given that this movie deals with time travel just like the first movie, they don't even attempt to establish any set of rules. But at the same time, those are the rules, or lack of rules, that the series has established. So if you didn't have a problem with it in the first Bill and Ted, then I don't see a reason to really criticize this movie. But if you did have a problem with it in the first Bill and Ted, then I think that's a true clue that this isn't the movie for you. When watching this movie, I truly understood that this is a movie for the fans. And I'm usually against that kind of methodology where filmmakers make a franchise film and they say, oh, it's for the fans. We're doing this for the fans, not the general public. And I'm like, that's not a really good way to be successful overall. But there are some good things about this movie that I found a lot of joy in. First of all, Bill and Ted. Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter still have great chemistry with each other. And it's really cool to see how the stress of trying to create this song has taken a toll on Bill and Ted. I feel like a lot of people might criticize Keanu Reeves in this role looking like he just is going through the motions, and he's not really giving it his all. And to those people, I say, first of all, Keanu Reeves is awesome, but he's never been that great of an actor. He's not Oscar level. And two, it fits perfectly with the character, because as I said before, trying to make the song that unites the world has really taken a toll on Bill and Ted. And I bought it. I bought into the fact that these two characters were just exhausted with everything that they've had to go through and all the pressure that they have to try to live up to the legends that they were told they would be in the future. And because their dynamic works so well once again, it still maintains a lot of that goofy humor. Whenever the characters go back in time and visit their future selves, it gets a laugh out of me. And I wouldn't say the humor is in any way clever. 
it's just so ridiculous at points that you can't help but laugh. And in that sense, it is very faithful and true to the original films. I mean, it's the same writing team, Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon. So I feel like if there's anyone that understands these characters more than Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter themselves, it's these two guys. As for the supporting cast, you have Kristen Scowl, as I mentioned beforehand, and She's pretty much playing herself. I like it whenever she pops up in anything like 30 Rock. I liked her appearances on The Daily Show back in the Jon Stewart days. You have William Sadler once again as Death. And in that Death makeup, it seems like he hasn't aged a day since Bill and Ted's bogus journey. And while he's not in the movie a whole lot, he kind of comes in at the end and is actually more useful in this movie than he was in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, if I'm going to be honest. Anthony Kerrigan plays a time-traveling robot, and I won't say much else in case you haven't seen the movie, but he's pretty funny as well. And the two actors that I think are the highlights of this movie, with the exception of Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter, are Samara Weaving and Bridget Lundy Payne, as I mentioned beforehand, playing Bill and Ted's daughters. And while they're pretty much the female equivalents of Bill and Ted in the way they act, they are Bill and Ted's daughters, so... I, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree in that scenario, but they're great. Uh, Samara Weaving is an actress that I've talked about a couple times beforehand. I loved her ever since I saw her in Ready or Not, and I liked her in Guns Akimbo. And Bridget Lundy Payne, who I'm sharing the same hairstyle as they are, they're a lot of fun as well. And their plotline is pretty much like doing the first Bill and Ted all over again, where they travel through time and collect historical figures, which you think would be a tired rehash of the first movie, and anyone who says that it is, is not wrong. But there's something about these millennials interacting with Mozart, Jimi Hendrix, and Louis Armstrong that made me laugh in the same way the first movie had these two 80s kids interact with Billy the Kid, Socrates, Joan of Arc, and Lincoln. If there are any problems I had with this movie, it's a couple things. I mean, first of all, I don't think this movie's as great as many people are saying it is. I like it, but I feel like it might be a little overhyped, if that's a thing. But that's not one of the two problems I have with this movie. The first issue I had with it is that there's a subplot involving Bill and Ted's wives, the princesses, Elizabeth and Joanna, and... I feel like the subplot doesn't really go anywhere, and it just kind of comes out of nowhere, and the writers seem like they forget about it every now and then. And then the ending of the movie is rushed. Bill and Ted come to this massive conclusion at the end of the film, and there's not really a whole lot of time for us to breathe and take in this revelation. And by the time you think the movie's gonna have its big wrap up, it just cuts to credits. I'm like, that's how you're ending this movie? That's that's really abrupt. Um, and I really didn't understand how this movie ended. Uh, so in the end, I think this is the weakest of the Bill and Ted movies. I still like the first movie a lot, and I think the second one is better than people give it credit for. This movie is just fine. It's not a bad movie, and as a rating, I would say it's good, but it is nowhere near great. This is a movie that really is catered to people who love the Bill and Ted movies prior to this. If you like the Bill and Ted movies, then you're going to like this one as well. If you didn't like the Bill and Ted movies, or you've never seen them, then this isn't the movie for you. Like I said before, I don't think this movie is as great as many fans are saying, but unlike a lot of critics out there, I also don't think it's one of the worst movies of the year, and nowhere among the worst third installments of a series. I mean, it's no Hangover Part 3, and it's no Rise of Skywalker. I liked it, it was fun, but it's nothing that you really need to rush out and see. And there you go, that's my review for Bill and Ted Face the Music. Now I want to know what you guys think about the movie. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, leave a comment, support my Patreon page, follow me on social media, and until then, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one, and for the last time, be excellent to each other, and party on, dudes.